Hello class. Um, today I will be talking about Earth's temperature and how it, it is impacted based on where you are on the Earth's surface. So the first concept I'd like to look at um, can be applied to Moscow. Um, and that's the temperature graph. And this temperature graph is unique because it has both high temperature averages and low temperature averages. And you can find the mean average by just simply um, averaging those two temperatures. So that's what the purple line represents. Um, next, I created a table for the average temperature in Celsius. Um, this, is, this can be used to compare um, to the other um, temperature profiles of lab number four. Um, as you can see, Moscow is pretty, um, it follows a pretty nice trend of winter months are cold and summer months are warm. As you, um, my, the next kind of concept I would like to look at is how latitude um, affects temperature. So latitude is the angular distance of a place north or south of the equator. Um, if we think of the equator as kind of this warm spot on the earth because of um, long daylight hours and um, daylight hours extending throughout the year. You can kind of think of it as the equator is the warmer part of the earth while the north and south poles are colder places. Um, this is pretty basic um, knowledge and as you can tell um, that there's ice on the south and north poles but there's no ice in near the equator. Um, so I'd like to look more into how latitude affects temperature by looking at Boise and Moscow. Um, so Boise is about 3% um, or 3 degrees north less than Moscow. So Moscow is farther north um, than Boise. And you can see that Boise does get hotter um, throughout the year. It also gets less precip. So, Boise is actually two degrees Celsius warmer on, on average than Moscow. Um, and it also receives almost half as half, half the amount of rain. So Moscow is colder, but wetter. Um, you can see that in the vegetation that grows around Moscow. And we will go more into that later in the, in the course, but just keep in mind that this is, you know, some concepts that you can kind of look like look at um, day to day. Um, so the next concept is altitude and temperature. Um, because of the lower atmospheric pressure higher up, um, it actually gets colder. So a rule of thumb is there's a three degree Fahrenheit decrease for every 1,000 feet of elevation that you rate that you rise. So you can think of that as sea level um, will be the warmest and then as you go farther and farther up um, away from sea level and you, as you're gaining altitude um, you're going to get colder and colder in general um, it's about you know three degrees every 1000 feet so if we look at sea level and compare it to 4000 feet that is 12 degrees um, fahrenheit difference so it should be if um, the sea level is 90 degrees um, at 4,000 feet, it should be around um, 78 degrees. Now, this is just pretty general, um, very simplified, but this is a concept that can be applied to the entire Earth. Um, the next concept that I'd like to look at is temperature and bodies of water. So large body of water um, have an ability to absorb heat and radiate it over long periods of time. So this moderates the fluctuations in temperature um, throughout the day and then also throughout the season. So areas that are closer to large bodies of water, such as the ocean or large lakes, are going to have more moderate um, temperature ranges than areas that are lo located farther away from these large bodies of water. It also keeps, it cools and it also keeps um, areas warm so that it's, it doesn't fluctuate as much um, throughout the day and throughout the season. 
Um, and the, the last kind of concept I would like to look at is temperature and in insulation. So at lower um, latitudes, as you can see, um, there's more direct um, sunlight and solar ra radiation. And as you go farther north and south, um, there's actually less um, direct radiation. So insulation is the amount of solar radiation that is either reflected off the atmosphere, clouds, and surface, or absorbed by the surface of the Earth and absorbed by the atmosphere and clouds. So insulation is a measure of energy. And for this lab, we are going to mostly focus on the energy that is absorbed by the, the surface and is very close to the um, surface level of, of what we experience. So we don't really care about high atmosphere um, areas. Um, so I'm going to wrap up with these, this, all these concepts combined to look at two different locations. Um, so the two locations are San Diego, California and Moscow, Idaho. So San Diego has a lower latitude. It's farther south. It's almost all the way down to Mexico. It's a lower elevation. It's about 13 feet um, from sea level. And there's a large presence of body, body of water. So the Bay of San Diego also helps, but it's predominantly the Pacific Ocean, which allows um, this temperature profile to be very smooth and not really fluctuate throughout the summer or throughout this, the year, in fact. Um, so if we think about it, San Diego doesn't get snow. And in the summer, it does get hotter, but it's not, it doesn't get that hot um, because the water cools. Um, but in Moscow, we get snow. Um, and then in the summer, it gets pretty hot. Like this summer, it was around 100 degrees some days. Um, and if you think about San Diego, most days it doesn't get up to 100 degrees. So there's, it's that cooling effect of the water. So. Once you combine all three of these principles, you can kind of see how the location of a city or point on Earth is affected by elevation, latitude, and also large bodies of water. Thank you. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, email me, um, attend my office hours. Um, yeah, I hope this helps. Um, show you the concepts in lab four.